Hi, I'm Dr. J, and this is a video about statistics. It's the fourth video in a four-part series talking about generally the field of statistics and specifically about the mathematical concept of a statistic. And we talked in particular about estimators, uh, our statistics that estimate population parameters. But another statistic is graphical statistics. Graphical statistics is a wide field. You probably have seen uh, box plots, histograms, scatter plots, and these kinds of uh, graphical statistics before. And I'm not going to talk a whole lot about those statistics, but what I am going to talk about is the fact that when you, as a data analyst, get data, maybe you're a researcher, you're in the field, and you've collected data in the field, and you put it into the computer, and you're ready to analyze it, stop. The first thing that you should do is to graph your data. That is, you should look at it in as many ways as possible. You should create histograms, you should create boss plots, you should create scatter plots, you should uh, change what's on the x-axis, change what's on the y-axis. Just look at your data in as many ways as possible. And the reason for doing this, there's a number of reasons, but here are some. Why you should look at your data, because you can find errors. This is probably the very first thing you should do. And we joke in the consulting group that I'm part of that it takes us about two minutes when somebody sends us a new data set to find an error in that data set. So errors are rampant and you should spend time trying to fix those errors. In particular, you should make sure that the variables have the correct range. Many vari variables are expected to be positive, so make sure that there aren't any negative values. If you aren't the one who created the data, make sure you understand how not available is encoded in the data set. It used to be the habit that this would be encoded as like negative 999 or something crazy like that. You should look at the data to see if there are outliers. Are there data that you weren't expecting that are too large perhaps? And maybe you find that those are actually errors. The second reason is to look and see in your data if relationships that you expect are actually there, right? Do your data represent what you were expecting to see? Now, if they don't, that doesn't mean that the data are wrong. But that does mean that, you know, there could have been an error, and maybe that's the reason that it's not what you were expecting to see. But you should take a look and make sure those relationships are there. In particular, if you think there should be a linear relationship between two variables, plot those two variables versus each other and see if there is, right? If you're expecting some kind of curvature, right, is there a quadratic relationship perhaps between two variables? But plot them and see. Take a look. Next one. Are there any relationships you didn't expect, right, that are new, right? This is great because this means there might be future research in that area, right? So plot it in as many ways as you can and look for those new relationships, right? Yes, we'll come back to making sure that uh, you answered your scientific questions in a valid, your scientific questions in a valid way, but you should still look at the data and see what the data are trying to tell you, okay? Uh, we're going to also talk about distributional assumptions that you're going to make with your data, right? Are you assuming normality of some piece of data? Uh, should the data be uniform for some reason? Was there a design in your data set? So you should see a number of observations at this value and a number of observations at this value, but no observations otherwise. Do they fit what you're expecting to see in the data? Okay. All right. So you should definitely take a look at your data. Um, all right. Now, especially when it comes time to creating publication graphics. You want to pay special attention to how those graphics are constructed. In particular, what I think you really want to do is to show the data as clearly and concisely as you can. So, right, you should not try to obscure what the data are telling you by fancy graphics or graphics that look cool. So, in particular, I've seen these exploding wedge 3D pie charts, right, which are sort of eye-catching but really have very much distorted the data and with that exploding wedge piece in particular, right, now your eye is just drawn to that. But that's good if you're trying to lie with statistics, but it's better if you just try to represent accurately the data that are there, okay? The plot itself should be self-explanatory. There shouldn't be many words that are needed to describe what's going on. Maybe a short caption, okay? That caption makes sure it's informative, but otherwise somebody should be able to take that graphic and immediately understand what that graphic is trying to explain, right? So you should use uh, colors and shapes to identify different aspects of the graph. You should make sure there's a legend so that those shapes and colors are explained. Uh, you should strive for a chart that has what's called a high information to ink ratio. That is, if there's color on that page in that graphic, 
that that color has meaning. The opposite of this is something called a bar chart. A bar chart has a big vertical column with a line up here, and really the information is only what's going on in that line up here. Right? All of this colored piece is just extra ink that's providing no actual value. Right? So avoid bar charts. Finally, you want to encourage the user, whoever is looking at this graphic, you want to encourage their eyes to make the comparisons that seem most relevant or most important. So that means putting points closer that are intended to be compared. You means using size and shape and color to highlight the differences that you're intending. All right, so the last slide here is one of my favorite graphics of all time. It's now getting to be about a decade old. Hopefully somebody will come up with a graphic that I like even better. But this graphic right here was printed in the New York Times. And it's a graphic that tries to demonstrate the investment you get in the stock market. So what you're looking at here, and the caption is kind of small, but you could click on the link. Oh, there's a PDF down below, and this link is a hyperlink in that PDF, and it will take you directly to that site. Uh, if not, you can take the PDF and you can blow this up so you can see what the caption is actually telling you. But what the caption tells you is that on the uh, sort of the Y axis over here, it imagines that you had invested some amount of money at that time. And then on the X axis here, under the columns, it says, suppose you took your money out at this date, right? And so the dates are all years here. So what it's showing you is what kind of return on your investment you would have had if you just had put money into the stock market at this date and took it out at this date. Now the color scale here shows you uh, green and dark green in particular is a high rate of return. Red and dark red in particular is a low or even negative rate of return. The gray in the middle is a middling amount of return. And there's a nice scale legend over there that will tell you that dis uh, difference. What the highlight of the graphic was meant to be in the article was this sort of uh, horizontal line here where there's sort of a, a outline set of boxes. And that outline set of boxes is an investment over a certain time period. I can't remember if it was 20 years or something like that. And it, overall, what the plot was trying to say is that, look, on average, if you just invested in the stock market over this period of time, you would have had, on average, this amount of return. And you can see this gray area over here, right? All of that gray area says, right, in the long run, if you just invested long enough, then you would have had sort of a middling rate of return. You would have had sort of the average return of the stock market over all that time. So I like this graphic because it, it number one, shows you a lot of data, right? So every cell in this graphic is a two-year combination when you invested, when you took money out. It has a high information to ink ratio because all of that color actually means something. It's not there just for the looks, right? And it can answer lots of questions. So I'm a big fan of this graphic and I encourage you that when you have data, you should plot it in as many different ways as you can think of and to keep plotting it as you think of new analyses and new approaches that you're going to do. So graphical statistics, incredibly important in the set of videos going forward, uh, I'm not going to provide more on graphical statistics other than when I get data to make sure that I plot it so that you can see what the data are. So I hope to catch you in our next video where we start talking about statistical inference.